Well, guys, uh, got this little Freightliner FL70. It's a nice little truck. It's a 94 FL70. And um, one of the big farms over there in Tui Lake brought it over here. And they just recently purchased this from somebody. But anyway, um, this has got the 8.3. I wish I had this setup. This one's nice. Mine, it's got all spring suspension on my FL70 service truck in there. Uh, and it's got the 5912 valve, which is fine. It's a little bit underpowered and it's getting a little tired too. But this one here's got 8.3 C series comes in it. Still got a nine speed. Uh, it's got air suspension, which I've never seen on one of these older 90. Like this is a 94. I was really surprised that it had air suspension. That's it's a this is a really nice. It's even got ABS on this thing a 94 with ABS. So it's a nice little truck, man, and it's got really low miles, and you can tell just by driving it how tight the sh the gear pattern is, how tight it is. It's it's only got ninety four thousand miles on it. I mean, this is a this is a killer little little rig. I love this thing, man. Somebody put like a custom bed on it with some kind of water tank here, but they must have been pulling like horse trailers or something with living quarters. Who knows? I don't know special toolboxes back here on the back anyway i put a clutch in it and then when i got i noticed it was riding really rough and i it must have been sitting for quite a while somewhere because i couldn't get the air suspension to raise up with the switch in the cab i finally uh pulled the leveling valve arm off and just ran it up and down then it aired right up so but somebody had stuck a single disc look at this goofy clutch somebody had in there it must have been from the factory i'm guessing but it's just a single disc clutch and it was completely gone and the, and the reason it was gone is because the clutch fingers were flat i mean those should be arced up to put spring tension on that pressure plate but they're flat it's almost like a pickup clutch weird setup never seen one like this goofy uh mostly uh, the ones i see are the bigger bigger ones but um uh, but the style we put in there was like this. It was a dual disc clutch, just like that. And um, of course, new clutch brake, rear main seal, had fly oil resurfaced, all that good stuff. Anyway, so what this video is concerning is this Cascadia Freightliner. And something that's a common problem with the DD15 Detroits is the cam housing leaks on them. So it, it's it, and it's quite a bit of work to to do the cam housing. So you'll see, and I kind of screwed up this morning. Is I I left early. My wife's gone, and I had to feed all the animals, and then and then uh, get the doggers ready, get my lunch made, and then I forgot that the other day I was pressure washing something off, and the stupid pressure washer hose got up against the exhaust and melted a hole in it so now i don't have a pressure washer i was going to hang around in town this morning and go in and get another pressure washer hose but just completely forgot about it oh well, i gotta start this thing let it build some air and we'll get it around i guess we'll just do it the old we'll do what i call the old pakistani truck repair way we'll just have to we'll just have to just get the part off and wash it up by hand real good and put it back on but is this one this guy has got 1.7 million on this thing and it's never been in framed pretty impressive I will let her build some air but you can see it's pushing it's slinging the oil all over everything I'm gonna get her around to the other side of the building Okay, let me find my light here. So, these Freightliner Cascadias, and the Coronados, even the old centuries. I found through the years of working on these things off and on, it just pull the damn tires off. And you can walk right in here and work on it, because otherwise, it's just, you don't realize, especially when you get older, climbing up and down off that tire. I mean, in the course of doing this job, you're going to be off, and off this tire probably... 50 60 times probably in one day i mean you talk about a workout by the end of the day it makes a hell of a difference so i don't know i just thought i'd 
throw that out there. We'll get my little stool over here, throw it in there, and we'll start pulling shit off of that. Oh. Injector harnesses right here, okay. Maybe would this light be a better fit here, maybe? Yeah, there we go. I might actually open that other door. That'll actually light it up quite a bit in here. Okay, and then you got zip ties here. We'll cut all these. Unplug your uh that's the intake air temperature. Um yeah, I was gonna I was going to get the seals for these. I'm going to pull them off and see what they got for seals on them. They don't sell the seals for these separately. You got to buy the whole harness. And it's like 120 bucks a piece. I mean, $240. When they won't sell you a damn O-ring to go over the top of it. It's just like, you got to be shitting me, man. Stuff like that just really, really, really burns my ass. You know, that they kind of do that shit to you. It's, it's bullshit. You know, I need a, a, a 10 cent O-ring and you're going to sell me a $120 part? Whatever, man. Yeah, they're like $120 a piece for both harnesses inside the valve cover. Son of a bitch is robbing me and don't even hold a gun on me. and loop them back through when you go back together they'll just pull out of this little oh this little deal here they just pull out of there don't worry about that later another what do we got here another another tie i don't even know if i need to even worry about that the only one i really need to consume myself with or worry about is unplugging i'm not pulling the intake manifold there's no need to do that Get the real pressure sensor off. And sometimes I leave it on and I flip it upside down where I can see the connector. I just pull the rail off the, the rocker housing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'll unplug this one because it's intake air temperature because it's easier to get on that one. You know, with that unplugged and out of the way, so. I think you just push on like that right there, and I can't even see this one. Can I? Yeah, see, that's that's always a problem with those. And I might have to take this one too. See, the zip tie here because I'm not gonna be able to get on that one correctly. Now I can get on there. Okay, and I still got to get this plate off the top here. Um, I'm going to unbolt this plate here, and then this plate as well. And there's some coolant lines, and there's another plate back here that supports that air cleaner. A lot of crap to pull off here. Well, I got something kind of in the works here. I don't know. I'm just going to run it by you guys. And I did some extensive talking, and I've been doing some research, and... Maybe I'll leave it up to some of you viewers, too, to see what this... I, I looked, and there were some pretty big names behind these people. Um, they're basically pro video promoters. And I've been real skeptical about a lot of those. There's that one outfit called Promo.com, and I did a, I, I read a bunch of reviews, and they're just crooks. Well, I, I shouldn't say that. They're not crooks. Not they'll sue me for slander or something knowing this day and age you can't tell the truth about anyone without being sued these people get their feelings hurt but you know i looked them up and i saw the reviews on them and it was not good you know they basically want you to do all the work and they get all the money but you know they'll, they'll promote your video but they get all the money well 
This outfit's name is called Jelly Smack. I know, it sounds kind of funny, huh? But I looked them up, and they're a legit deal. Um, but what they do is they put your videos out on Facebook. They edit them, and they put them out. And they called me. I looked them up, and I looked up the reviews on them, and I didn't really see anything bad about them. Golly, damn it. The spacer that goes over that, and I just dropped it. No, let's see here. I'm gonna be able to get in here on these, am I? But I gotta take this off anyway. So I I take this off. Don't have to. It's just way way easier to deal with this shit. But no, they want to put my videos out on Facebook, and so they're gonna they're gonna edit a couple videos, and then they're gonna put them out for a test run, and they do a test run on Facebook, and then if they if they see that they can make money and I can make money off the damn thing, and then they'll we'll work out an agreement between the two of us. And I said. You know, that sounds like a more legitimate thing to me than some of these other outfits that try to get you to do this stuff and they want you to send this confirmation and sign something and then the next thing you know, they have all the rights to your videos and everything. I had some guy message me a while back and he was some kind of hotshot guy up in Seattle somewhere and he he was trying to he was trying to get people lined out to go work at this gold mine in Alaska that was opening up and so anyway he messaged me and basically he went into this long paragraph about how I could do videos if I wanted to but they would have all the rights to the videos I thought you know piss off you son of a bitch you know you're sitting there you're, you're calling me and you're telling me wh what I'm gonna be able to do and what I can't do that's why I'm self-employed right there that is exactly why because I am not putting up with that nonsense you know you ain't telling me shit kind of pissed me off you know he's telling me what I'm gonna do and what I ain't doing I ain't even said yes or I'm gonna hire on with you or nothing and you're already laying down the law to me yeah yeah go to hell that's what I thought about the whole situation I guess I'm I'm just a hard ass, you know. I don't like a Thor tie. This one's a little bit different than Lalo's truck when I tore his apart. I'll pull these out up here. Detroit. And it ain't some piece of shit two-stroke. These guys, I'm going to tell you something. I know I'll offend a bunch of you guys. Some of you guys are just in love with them two-strokes. Here's my opinion. I think those are the biggest pieces of shit they ever were. A lot of noise and they don't really do anything. <laughs> My, I, I, I grew up, and our first hay truck was a 73 that I drove anyway. It was a 73 cab over a freight liner with a silver 92 in it. And that piece of shit, I mean, you just, you just got to have it wound tight. Wound tight all the time to get any power out of that thing, you know. And then you jumped in a big cam 400, and you're like, wow, what a difference. What a difference. <clears throat> way better situation to be in that big thing when we we bought another 84 freight liner i think it had a big cam 3 in it and man we parked that old red and white cab over i think it's still setting out here actually still runs i guess they were good for their day but these guys that I guess maybe it's nostalgia for them or something. 
I see that bus grease monkey. He likes working on those little junkers all the time. He can have at her. Not a big fan. Never was a big fan. I got a couple customers that still got, like, one of them's got an old Michigan loader with a, it's got a 53 series in it, and they don't use it very much at all. Maybe, like, twice a year, that old loader, and then it'll, it'll set for a long time, and he'll say it won't start, and you go out there, and, and the rack, one of the injectors is stuck, and you free the rack up on it, and then it'll fire right up, but... That probably offended somebody because they're in love with their old piece of shit two-stroke Detroit, but that's okay. Better be pissed off and pissed on. What do you think about that? Nobody talks about my old Detroit that way. Nobody. Damn it. And then we had an old conventional Freightliner that had just a straight 3406 in it, 3406A. And that was way better than I thought. I liked it better than the Freightliner. With the, I liked it better than the Big Cam 400. That was a good truck. It really was. I really, really liked that truck. We wore that thing completely out. Completely out. Now, I'll probably leave that one on there. See, the one I did here, I did a rebuild on one here, and I didn't video that one. But this didn't separate right here on that one, but that was a 2013. The whole thing came off. So. Okay, well, we're getting somewhere now. Biggest thing on these is getting all the stuff out of the way. Yeah, another story about an old cab over truck that I was driving. So I used to do <laughs> used to do some pretty illegal stuff when I was younger. I would wait till the weekend, and my family, uh, we kind of snuck around and we did this sort of thing. But I knew how to drive truck, and I didn't have to go through any scales. I would haul hay over to Shasta Valley on the weekend. And I'd take a truckload of hay, 80,000 pounds, an old cab over freight liner. We had two of them with Detroits in them. And uh, I'd go over the hill there and deliver the hay and then come home. Never had any problems. Well, one Saturday I took off and a load of hay and got up top of Mount Hebron and that one had a yeah, that one had a silver 92 in it too. And that sucker went bang. And it was still running. And I was a dumb kid, you know, I didn't know any better. And I I got out of the truck there and oil everywhere, all over the ground. And I noticed there was a big hole on the side of the block and a connecting rod sticking out the side of it. Oh, that's not good. Huh. I don't think that's supposed to be like that. Well, that's right. There's a bolt. Where's it at? There's a bolt somewhere. This tube's got to come off, so maybe I'll actually get a couple bolts back on this. i got to pull this tube off here. I forgot. Yeah, yeah we got to pull this line off. Anyway, <laughs> that thing was still sitting there running on the rest of the cylinder. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just knocking it. It's just... One thing about them old junkers, they were tough. They were a really tough old rig. We'll give them that.
that's that's the one and blew it with i blew that one up and then we got the we got the blue one with the big cam 400 in it if that's right yeah I'm trying to remember that's a long time ago long time ago many moons ago it's a bad thing about pulling the tire off is that damn drum when you're standing on it likes to turn on you now is this thing gonna come off like a civilized thing with the or what Ooh. nice and tight like because it's just easier I don't have to fight the battery and mess around with that I just lay this thing over here somewhere like that got spacers here which I dropped one for this other one over here but... okay get that plate off back there yeah and then we'll just start uh gutting side to side then then we start gutting everything on the sides okay well, we'll use the first specialty tool which would be the you can get these on the rail loose without that but the one going into the rocker i call it the rocker box they call it the cam housing but camera off but oh don't do that kind of a pain these lines are damn ratchet off of there now the damn fill caps in the way let me pull the fill cap off there we go now i can switch the ratchet If we get these loose, maybe Once you get these loose, sometimes you can get in here like this. It's just quicker than using that specialty tool. If you can get in there, I really recommend don't try breaking them loose with a regular end wrench. You'll round these off. Most definitely. There's an O-ring inside here. That this comes up against so 
usually once you get past that o-ring you're all right then they'll come out but they just get that where they're hard to pull out past the o-ring okay there it is it's kind of tight that first one is it really is it is no joke Driptroit. It's a Driptroit. I knew some guys that used to work in them coal mines there in uh, Wyoming. And they would they would tell me, these are old guys, you know, and they told me about some of the old Detroits that they had back then. And they said them Detroits, it'd be so cold up there in Gillette, Wyoming. It'd be so cold, like 30, 40 below zero. And he said, it'd be so cold that the oil would be leaking out of those Detroits. And it would, the oil would just almost freeze and it just started, it would pile up on the ground and just pile up. It was so cold, but they never shut them off because it was too cold. You never get them started again. All that stuff around there. And if anything did quit in the wintertime, they hooked uh, something onto it, a pig cat or something, and drug it up to the, to the shop and put it in somewhere, somewhere warm. So, you see what I'm doing here? I just gotta go down the line here and just pull these off. And uh, down here's your relief valve on the end. It's, there's a plug exiting into the rail, but this banjo fitting with this big T50, I think it's a T50 Torx, you gotta pull that loose. And then pull the lines where the high pressure pump feeds the rail. And then uh, all these pass-through uh, seals. We'll replace all those. He's got six brand new ones in the cab. And then I pulled the rail off the side of this. Uh, for one thing is, I can't... Uh, you know, maybe I'll leave it on. I'm thinking about that. Maybe I'll just get a wrench and take this loose and then turn it to where I can see the connector and get it loose without breaking it. But no, I'll, I'll leave the rail on and I'll just take the lines loose and I'll pull the rail. The rail can stay with the with the uh, cam housing and I'll pressure wash both of them I'll have to get a hose though for my pressure washer tomorrow okay now working on this side the R cooler
else that I'm not seeing? Or what's going on? What's going on? I got that loose there. Don't really see anything else that would be holding me up here. As far as I can tell. Well. Fellas, get a bigger bar. See if you can really tear some shit up. Forgot, you know, I should have. I should have drained that block down. And I completely forgot about it. Oh, here's what it is. It is what it is. Uh, let's see if I can fit all the thing out here now. Okay, huh. All right, so. Huh. So you got another sensor here you need to unplug. There you go, there you go. Okay, water manifold. But now I'm gonna get my head out of my ass and Put my little hose on over here and drain it down so I don't make a bigger mess. I forgot about it. I'm going to pull this water manifold off the cam housing here. Well guys, this is a continuation of the DD15 Detroit cam housing video. I'll show you. I got the whole family with me today. Uh, we got Duke here. There's the big man camping out. I leave the door open. Yeah, I don't care. It's just a pickup. As long as it runs good and goes up and down the road, I don't care. They can go camp out in the pickup. They're just like my kids, you know. So, hey, don't be eating the rat shit off the floor, guys. Off this old truck. There's Oscar. Everybody's always asking about Daisy, huh? Everybody's asking about Daisy Girl. That's my old girl there. And there's a crazy one. There's a crazy one. There's a crazy one. There's Lulu. Yep, I know. Everybody's crazy, huh? Allie's running around here somewhere. She's mother dog. Anyways, Daisy, what are you doing, Chicky? Huh? What are you doing, old girl? Daisy's getting... Stop! She doesn't want to play like that. You need to calm down, you wild maniac. Josie's absolutely maniacal. Anyway, um... So, I had to, I was working on this thing, and then I just, you just get so many things going on, you forget all of the aspects of what you did to a previous one and what you needed, and I started disassembling, and then I realized that, oh shoot, for some reason I had it in my brain that, oh, I don't need any gaskets but the cam housing and those uh, pass-through seals for the injector lines, I don't need anything else. Well, no, you need a lot more stuff. You need this thermostat housing gasket, you need the exhaust manifold gaskets, you need the water manifold gaskets, 
you need these nipples here where the EGR cooler goes into the water manifold and the crossover tube gasket there for that. So there's a lot of things that a guy needs. Uh, so I went over there yesterday to Medford. I ran over there and I grabbed exhaust manifold gaskets. Uh, here's the water manifold gaskets. Uh, he gave me these. I didn't really need them, but we got them. And I got the nipples for the EGR cooler. And I got a thermos housing gasket and I got four bolts. What do you think that cost right there? What do you think that costs for two water manifold gaskets, two exhaust manifold gaskets, four bolts, a couple clamps, and a couple of these things? $567 for that right there. I'm telling you folks, I'm telling you, they, they sure got you, don't they? They sure got you coming and going on this stuff anymore. But it is what it is. We just gotta keep persevering and pushing on. Uh, and things are only gonna get worse, I mean, with the way things are going. Well, guys, I've been going along on it here. Um, had to let my battery charge up on my camera before I could keep recording, so I just kept disassembling while I uh, let the battery charge up anyways. So, here we are. Uh, this is, you know, I don't, I don't recall. I'm trying to think. Is I'm not as familiar with these Detroits as some of these other guys are that work on them a lot more than I do. But I thought they put that exhaust turbine thing on the DD16, not the 15. Is this a DD16? This engine conforms to US EPA 560. Let's see, displacement, it's a 14.8 liter, it's a 15 liter, so apparently they did. They put that on the 15s too. I didn't know they did that. I thought they just put them on the DD 16s, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. I had the block drained over here. I'll get that back in there where it was. Um, see this right here, okay? So the exhaust comes out of the turbo, then it goes through this other, and it's basically, um, ah, you can't see it here, but this is a stator, and then there's a turbine. There's a turbine impeller in there too, kind of like a, like on a turbo, like a turbine, with a set of blades, and then it turns this gear, the exhaust will come on out here and go out through the exhaust system back into the inlet side of the uh, DOC and the DPF. But then what it does, hooks to this gear right here. And somehow, I'm not really certain if there's some kind of clutch mechanism or how that exactly works back in there. I've never had it apart back in there. But it spins that. And that's supposed to help put a little bit more power to the crankshaft, which... I think they got away from all that stuff. The newer ones, I don't think they even have and utilize that because it didn't really do anything. You know, it's supposed to help improve fuel economy and add more horsepower and all that good stuff. But anyways, it, they found out that it really doesn't do anything. It's just a waste of time and space and everything else. So uh, anyway, so I gotta put these. I'm gonna put these back where they belong. I'm trying to remember where they went. One of them was a hold down for. Mm, wait a second. That one goes down here, and this one goes back here. Let's put them back where they were, so I know where in the heck they go. Once I'm going back together here, would be very beneficial to me. That one will go right there. Look at she's pretty greasy, huh? Where that thing's been leaking down the side of the engine block. Even if you wanted to pressure wash it, you couldn't really even pressure wash the darn thing because you couldn't get to it. I mean, it's just they, they've really got these things covered up with components on the side of the engine to where they're. I mean, you could you could wash it with a steam cleaner or whatever, and you're going to get the spots that are you know visible, 
that the water can actually get to, but everything else is shielded. It's not going to even hit it. And then once you disassemble it, after you wash it off, you're still going to have a big greasy spot here that wasn't accessible with the pressure washer. So, going to have to this one here. Go right there. Yeah, that thing's a joy to pull out of there too. That exhaust, they can get hung up in there. I, I had to fight it quite a while to get it out of there. Which I should have videoed it, but the damn camera was dead as usual. Okay, so now we pull exhaust manifold off of it. Okay, we've got... Oh, what are those? Those are 13s. Yeah. Uh, I had a deep well. It was too long. I can get back in there. Boy, I don't know. That ain't going to happen on that top one. I'm going to have to... Uh, I'm going to have to do that top one by hand. No, you can't see, but I don't know where. If I had a head mounted camera again, I could probably do it, but I don't. Quite a job to reseal one of these cam housings, especially if it's got that. I don't know, I don't, I used to know the nomenclature for what they called it, but I don't remember now what their term was for it. Somebody will tell me all about it, I'm sure, so. Okay. Man. She was in there pretty good. Okay, so now we've got this one back here, and that's going to require a short socket. Now I have to remember what the hell I did with that. It's right here. The ratchet is kind of hitting the other side there and not letting me get on it straight. Ah, stand on your head type situation. There we go. I'm not going to be able to go very far though. Ah. Oh, come on. Not the hardest one to get to is the one that's going to break or something on me. That's usually what happens. I can't go too far because then the ratchet head's going to bind up against the manifold and then I won't be able to do anything. Maybe I can get this one now that I got it loose. It's not on there square, but they don't make anything easy for a guy working on these things, I'll tell you that. I think the computers, I don't think there's much with the people designing and I think the computers design all this stuff anymore. There's maybe there's a little bit of human input. I don't know. I'm not an engineer, but it doesn't seem there's a lot of common sense with a lot of this stuff anymore, I'll tell you that. Okay. No, wait. Did it come out there or what? I'm trying to get the spacer to come with it, but it's not wanting to do it. But I know I'll pull the manifold off of it and then the spacer will fall off on the ground. I'll be chasing it. 
I guess it can stay there. It doesn't want to come off. for the actuator this is in the way so can't get on that one square oh Not easy. And I seized the heck out of these things. Go back together. Man. Whew. Making me earn my keep. we can zip the rest of them out and move on move on with life there's just no good place to be here with the camera maybe something like that I don't know there's some manifold bolts at sometimes Pulling the wrong ones out, which are the, uh... Huh. Oh, what am I doing? The spacer did come off. I didn't think the spacer came off. Okay, finally. I think we're getting there. What are we doing here? What are we doing? What are we doing? There we go. Uh -huh. Okay. Manifold gaskets. Get rid of those. Okay. All right. Now we're finally getting down to business. And get these two hoses off here. Pull these off the heater core hoses. And then there's a line back here that you'll have to remove off the back of the. Water manifold, I already got this one loose. It's loose right there. But we'll pull this one here loose. The exhaust, uh, you know, there's nothing pushing oil, it looks like, on any of the cylinders. They're all pretty nice and clean, carboned up, you know, but that's, that's okay, huh? Ah, uh, okay, so, yeah, I gotta pull these two hoses off. Pull that line off back there. Get the water manifold off of the darn thing. Let's see, where's that 916 set? That's what that is back there. Okay. That one's there. These two hoses got to come off. Half the time when you try to get those off, if they've been on there lots of miles, then they rip and tear and you gotta replace them. Trying to get them off. Um, on this 
piece that goes across the front and it's a part of now there's a strap right here I take this strap loose right here and that's holding this together so we'll just take one bolt out and pull the water manifold I don't recall I don't think there's anything attached to the actual cam housing on the front I don't think I might be wrong I think everything that's attached is down yeah it's down below on the head it's not attached to the aluminum part of the cam housing okay so finally kind of getting down to the interesting part and get the valve cover off here in a little bit okay people this should give you a little bit better understanding of where the leak originates from as you can see the cam housing let's get this manifold or water manifold gasket and they can really get hung up on there too another one back here if I can <clears throat> okay you can see where the cam housing the ceiling surface is right here and that's where it's all been running down it it looks like maybe the valve cover gasket is leaking back in here too because it's a little bit wet actually one of my see now am i thinking correctly here is that a seam or is that just blowing it up pretty sure in the seams right on top of the head yeah it's right here there's no seam here that i can tell this should be all one piece right here but let's get this thing here if i can sit this up here and maybe not have to remove it it'd be pretty handy Okay, let's get the valve cover off of it. <sighs> Lots of stuff to take off to get where you want to be on these. It's just like anything else that's made in the modern day age. <clears throat> None of this new stuff is, is easy, I'll tell you that. Okay, this one's got the stud, so I gotta... Should be loose. short socket back here find it and then we've got to basically get the engine in time after we get things situated here um, Huh. Fell on my butt there. At least they put this little where you can move this cowling off the front. Those centuries, they didn't even do that for you. Those centuries, man, the Freightliner Century class, man, those are hard to work on. Those trucks are. First one I ever worked on was uh, had a, it had a, a 12.7 liter 60 series in it. All right, so I'm not going to be able to get on that. Got one left back there, but I cannot get on it with the same back. So let me get the ratchet. Ugh.
So I'm not going to get this thing done as fast as I wanted to get it done because I didn't get any gasket or seals for that exhaust turbine thing over there. I just I just didn't even think about it. So, I mean, it is what it is. I mean. Out of it. Is it going to be a willing participant? That's why I brought that hammer up here with me because I kind of thought that's probably what it was going to do. Hopefully, you don't find any surprises underneath the valve cover. I've got so much stuff to do that I don't really need any more major projects going in my lap right now. Find somewhere to step, because if I step on the drum, it turns, and I'm going to wind up on the floor in a big pile of shit. Let me go lay this somewhere. 